when graduate students go into these new endeavors, a new project, um, a new process, they need to get specific training and they need to have it insured and have it assessed so they really understand what it is they're doing. And the CSB found that the use of personal protective equipment within Texas Tech laboratories was not consistently enforced. When we were at TTU, we learned that many people made the decision whether or not to wear their personal protective equipment based on the level of danger they felt that they were about to undertake. One of the issues that the CSB examined with the TTU incident was safety accountability. How do universities and academic institutions ensure that people are working in a safe environment? What we found at TTU was that the organizational structure was such that individuals that were responsible for doing safety inspections did not have direct authority or oversight over the principal investigators and their laboratories. Prior to the accident, the, uh, the whole safety management structure reported to the Vice President for Administration and Finance. Um, after this accident, uh, the Provost and the President and I looked at this very carefully and decided that a new reporting structure was required. Dr. Taylor Amy is the Vice President for Research at Texas Tech University. Since the accident, Texas Tech has modified its organizational structure so that the Environmental Health and Safety Director reports to Dr. Amy who also has authority over the principal investigators. We did this because we wanted to have uh, the safety culture, this changing safety culture, to have a chance to, to grow and, and, and become part of the fabric of the institution. We, we needed to connect it more closely to the academic life of faculty. The CSB investigation determined there had been two previous near misses within the laboratories of the same principal investigators since 2007. While no one was injured, CSB investigators concluded there were similarities in the causes of these incidents to the January 2010 explosion. But these key lessons were missed at the time of the earlier incidents. The CSB would like to see TTU and really all universities create a tracking system to document the accidents that are happening so that they can facilitate learning, not just in the laboratory where the accident happened, but really in all laboratories. One of the areas that the CSB examined with the TTU case was the role of the grant funding agency uh, in regard to safety. The CSB determined that the Department of Homeland Security, which funded the research at Texas Tech through an agreement with Northeastern University, had a general condition stating that the safety of researchers was the responsibility of the various host institutions. However, DHS did not impose any specific safety requirements for research with energetic materials, and Texas Tech did not evaluate the hazards or develop any specific university safety policies. Grant funding bodies can play a huge role in influencing safety by including stipulations and requirements in their grant applications. Because Texas Tech is a public institution in a state that lacks its own workplace safety program, it is not required to abide by the federal OSHA laboratory safety standard. But Texas Tech officials did voluntarily develop a chemical hygiene plan, using the OSHA laboratory standard as guidance. When you look at OSHA's laboratory standard, though, it also focuses on health hazards of chemicals, not physical hazards of chemicals. That almost can lead one to s decide that it precludes the need for writing standard operating procedures when working with chemicals that provide um, large physical hazards, fires, explosions, etc. To highlight this gap in the laboratory standard, the CSB recommended that OSHA issue a safety bulletin on the importance of controlling physical hazards of chemicals in the laboratory. And the CSB noted that no comprehensive guidance exists for conducting hazard evaluations within the dynamic environment of academic research laboratories. There's a lot of good suggestions and kind of hints at how to do it, but there's not a comprehensive guidance on how to conduct thorough hazard evaluations for these graduate students who are doing much more independent research work. As a result, the Chemical Safety Board recommended that the American Chemical Society develop a methodology for evaluating and controlling hazards in academic research laboratories. The board also recommended that Texas Tech University should revise and expand its chemical hygiene plan to ensure that the physical hazards of chemicals are controlled 
and develop and implement an incident and near-miss reporting system. There's a lot of momentum here for um, safety consciousness on campus, but it shouldn't have had to come to that. Don't wait for a serious accident to happen on your campus to begin to think about safety and transform your own culture. When we think about the role of principal investigators and senior campus administrators in lab safety programs, I have concerns because in many places, I feel they are not providing the leadership in this that's needed. Dr. James Kaufman is the president of the Laboratory Safety Institute a nonprofit organization which provides safety training for universities. Academic institutions encourage their students to achieve excellence in their work. They need to apply that same high standard to their laboratory safety programs, environmental health and safety programs. To achieve a high safety standard, the CSB investigation identified key laboratory safety lessons for universities. Ensure that research-specific hazards are evaluated and then controlled by developing specific written protocols and training. Expand existing laboratory safety plans to address the physical hazards of chemicals. Ensure that safety personnel report directly to a university official who has the authority to oversee research laboratories and implement safety improvements. Document and communicate all laboratory near misses and incidents.